Good afternoon, dear listeners and dear participants of the 4th Lumine Edu 2020. Let me introduce. I'm Natalia Nastas, PhD student of the State University of Physical Education and Sport, Kishinev, Republic of Moldova. The topic of our paper is the fight against corruption in sport, international and national experience. The authors, Vasily Triboy and Natalia Nastas. A very important and current problem for the national sport in our country, as well as the world arena, is the fight against corruption. The classic definition of corruption is associated with the public authority abuse. This abuse is most often associated with official position or authority or illegal enrichment, bribe-taking. In its most general form, it can be argued that illegal use of a person by his power is involved in the interests of society and state allowing such a person to obtain certain benefits as money, valuables, other property or services, as well as political advantages. The fight against corruption is a problem of global importance. Therefore, speaking of international law aimed at combating corruption in sport, first of all, we should resort to general acts of international law. The most important of this is the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, adopted in New York on October 31, 2003 by Resolution 58 Four. The Convention notes the link between corruption and other forms of crimes, in particular organized and economic crime, including money laundering, indicating that large volumes of assets have now emerged in the sphere of corruption, which may constitute a significant share of state resources, which as a result, it threatens their endangers, their political stability and sustainable development. Corruption has a long cheese to be a local, internal problem. It is a transnational phenomenon that affects the entire world world community, the economy of all countries, and that is why it is extremely important to organize international corruption in the field of corruption prevention and fight. In its publications, the Department of Public Information of the UN Secretary defines a non-governmental organization as follows. A non-governmental organization is any voluntary union of citizens, non-profit organization organized at local, state or international level. Historically, the objectives of creating international sports organization were other tasks related to the establishment and development of a certain kind of sport, in particular the introduction of uniform rules for organizing competitions, arbitration seminars, etc. This is how the International Sports Federation sport, or the task of, for organizing of sporting event. The most obvious example is the International Olympic Committee, whose purpose is to organize the Olympic Games. These two fields of international sports organization formation predetermined the dual structure of the modern sports movement. On the one hand, it has a common system linking, in simplified form, the International Olympic Committee and the National Olympic Committees. And on the other hand, in every sport there is an International Sports Federation. This relationship is in fact imperative, subordinate in nature, since it is based first of all on the institution of recognition by International Olympic Committee of the National Olympic Committee, or in another case, the recognition by the International Sports Federation. As a result, the International Olympic Committee and International Sports Federation in each particular sport, for example, FIFA in football, FIBA in basketball, etc., although there are certain exceptions to this rule, have become essentially monopoly organizations, completely controlling both the Olympic movement and those or other sports. And as you know, monopoly is one of the most common premises for corruption. Another premise is resource control. Early, at the time of its establishment, both the International Olympic Committee and International Sports Federation were completely social structures that united amateur sportsmen who for their pleasure, the term sports angel sport came from all fashion, do sport entertainment pleasure, organizing competitions in one rule or another. However, according to millions of people, both sportsmen and fans were attracted to this process after the sport became great and a lot of money came into it. The situation changed in a completely fundamental way. A resource has emerged for the possession of which is fought for 
all the honest and unkind methods. The purpose of our research was to demonstrate the obvious objective of the state's influence on sport in order to create control mechanisms for sports organizations that manage modern sport, as well as mechanisms to combat corruption. Sport is one of the largest businesses in the world, being influenced and influencing both financial and political interests. Every year, millions of dollars and euros circulate in this area, with most transactions and deals taking place behind closed doors in order to maintain any possible advantage over the competition. This fierce competitiveness, together with the lack of transparency, makes the sports field extremely vulnerable to acts of corruption. The most common corruption act is bribery. There have been countless cases where both referees and players have accepted or asked for bribes to arrange matches of competition. In addition, there have been situations where the owners of sports clubs have received or requested bribes for transfers of players between teams as well as for transfers or other efforts. Another form of corruption commonly encountered in sports is fraud. Sponsorship contracts, construction contracts for new stadiums, all of these transactions involve very large amounts of money, which on the one hand makes the temptation to cheat some of this money often irresistible, and on the other hand that the influence traveling in terms of granting them should flourish. Another common act of corruption is money laundering, covered by insufficiently monitored sponsorship and advertising contracts, and by the acquisition of clubs and players, especially through the use of international transfers, fictions, companies and tax havens. One form of sport-specific corruption consists of bets arranged, many of scandals caused by this practice being blamed on organized crime. A significant reduction of corruption in sport can only occur through a significant increase in the transparency of transactions and through a strict and continuous monitoring by independent auditors. In addition, making purchases and awarding contracts through public tenders would make money laundering much more difficult. The national task to develop the sport with the highest achievements but still, the public interest is the one who came, comes here, who acts as a group of private interests, which continues to develop in group interest and then in general interest. This is such an interest that must be realized in order to develop the private interest, but at the same time be realized so as to maintain the stability of the society as a whole. From a legal point of view, the public interest is an essential element of democratic state system, including an integral element of the checks and balances system. It seems that various public interests, including sports, should be combined and balanced. This is confirmed by special acts such as the Council of Europe Convention against the manipulation of sporting events. A study of the rules of this convention shows that, in a sense, it is necessary for sports organizations to introduce the principles of good governance into their practice. Of course, it is not about all sports organizations, and it is obvious that the creators of the convention have encountered a number of difficulties in defining this concept category. The solution has been proposed quite sleepily and efficiently. A special committee is created to implement the convention, which compiles a list of sports organizations that manage sports or any sport at national level, makes changes to it and ensures its publication in the appropriate form. The main principles of good governance that sports organizations must implement if they are located on the territory of the state parties to the convention are Defining and preventing conflicts of interest, including prohibition of disclosure of inside information, accurate and constant compliance with contracts, in particular the obligation arising there from disclosure requirements, etc. Another problem is the financing of sport. The fundamental requirement of the Convention is the opening of relevant information and the transparency of the infusion mechanism of budgetary resources in sport. In addition, each state must establish and fund institutions that counteract the manipulation of sport. Finally, the Convention contains the obligation of each state to consider choosing the financial support of a sport organization for which sanctions are imposed for the manipulation of sports competition for at least the duration of these sanctions. A similar financial sanction should be applied on behalf of the state, even if a relevant sports organization don't effectively apply the rules for combating sports manipulation. The most important areas of fight against corruption in the field of sport are the fight, the fight against illegal betting houses, organizing the exchange of information regarding the handling of sports competitions, establishing criminal liability for handling sports events, combating income laundering from handling sports events. 
Corruption remains one of the main impediments to development and investment, affecting all sectors of society despite the gradual progress of anti-corruption policies. The Republic of Moldova has most of the former components of a solid anti-corruption architecture, including institutions charged with anti-corruption policies and legislation, as well as institutions responsible for preventing and combating corruption. In conclusion, thus, in modern world, the interest to fight against corruption prevail over the autonomy, the self-organization of the sport. In fact, the goal of interstate agreements related to the field of sports management it is related to the implementation of the principles of good governance in sports policy and practices. Moreover, based on these principles, the cooperation between governmental bodies and the sports movement is built and developed. Finally, the obvious objective of state influence on sport is to create control mechanisms for sports organizations that manage modern sport as well as mechanisms to combat unethical behavior in sports, including, if necessary, criminal prosecution. Summarizing the results of our study, we can conclude the fight against corruption represents an opportunity for the beneficial institutions, which can strengthen and improve their systems for, for preventing and combating corruption and money laundering, and for the recovery of assets, by referring to worldwide practices and standards. Following the intense consultations carried out with all the beneficiaries of the Republic of Moldova, the Ministry of Education, Culture, and research, the National Olympic and Sports Committee, the Paralympic Committee, the Sports Federation and other structures in the country in order to guarantee the effective support in the field of physical culture sport in the country. The direct relations with the interested actors contributes to the creation of a positive framework which will favor the overall success of the future activities that will be carried out in order to obtain the expected results. Thank you very much for your attention.